Hey guys, welcome back to Status Detail, and today uh, we're gonna do a vlog because I don't really know what to film on this car, so we're gonna just do a vlog style video, and uh, I think I'm gonna walk you guys around uh, so a few different things on this car. I've been getting a couple different questions lately from some of my own customers and also just from our YouTube videos with some good questions. So I think I'm gonna try and just cover some of those questions in this video, and we're just gonna talk about uh, different cleaning things. It'll kind of almost be like a QA and a uh, vlog, but it's gonna be on a McLaren uh, 570 GT, so fun car. Alrighty, we're going to talk interior later. Obviously, that's pretty shiny, so we're going to fix that later on. Alrighty, here's a not-so-cold start on a 570 GT with a Fab Speed exhaust and no cats. So it should sound pretty good, but it's not going to be uh, crazy loud because you did drive it here. Still pretty good. I've always loved the uh, gauge cluster on this car, especially when you put it into, uh, you guys might be curious, so when you put it into active, if you just leave it out of active, you can't do anything, but if you put it in active, you have options here for track, and then when you turn these, you get like a, a little more of a serious, you get a little more of like a serious like rev counter system, um, and those are shift lights on the top, so it's much more track focused, right? And then when we turn this back, it'll just go back to like daily driver mode almost. Um, yeah, I've always thought that's super cool. Another interesting thing is this car has no park. You just put it in neutral. You have drive, neutral, and reverse. So when it's in neutral, you come over here and you have a uh, parking brake. It's like a, you know, an electric parking brake. Um, so you have to put it in neutral and then that. It's uh, kind of a weird thing. I think the first time I saw that when I got into one of these a couple of years ago, I was a little like, uh, uh, how do you park it? Like, it's kind of different. Also, another thing that's kind of fun is the uh, climate control. In the climate control, the little guy there is he's like wearing a race car helmet. I've always thought that's pretty cool too. All right, so one of the things that's come up a lot lately is people have asked me, how do I take care of bugs? And I don't think they always mean like, I can't get them off. How do I remove it? It's more like, I just have bugs on the car. How do I remove it safely? Um, so this car has some bugs on it. So let's, let's talk about it. And I'm gonna flip the camera around. All right, so we have some bugs on the front of this car and uh, hopefully they're showing up pretty well. Um, nothing crazy, and I think this is kind of what a lot of people are going to encounter. So this car is not terribly dirty, um, but it does have bugs, it has been driven, and uh, the customer would probably ask me, just like my previous customer did who had a 911, he said, how would I remove bugs from my car, like, carefully? All right, so the fast version on how to do this, because this is really its own video altogether, is step one, you want to pressure wash the bugs off. If you can pressure wash them off, 99% of the time they will come off. You can get pretty close to a bumper with uh, a pressure washer and it will blow everything off. Don't get super close and don't, you know, get it super close and hold it there for 25 minutes. That's obviously not good. Um, if you 
if that doesn't work or you don't have a pressure washer, step number two is gonna to be to use an IK foamer or a pressure washer foam cannon. They both accomplish the same thing. You do not need a uh, pressure washer to foam a car. You can buy a $35 IK foamer. If that doesn't soften it and loosen it and make it so you can take it off with agitation, then we gotta use products and that's when we're gonna talk Car Pro Bug Out and Gion Bug and Grime. Now, a lot of people just want a product to solve everything and that's just not, you don't necessarily, I mean, the IK Foamer is a product, but you don't always need Car Pro Bug Out to solve your problem. What you probably need is just a better process in the beginning to knock it out and then you're gonna be good and everything will be fine. Because um, I'm definitely not the guy who's trying to sell you a million different products. So only use those products or buy those products if for some reason you can't get bugs off a car or on your daily driver that you put 12,000 miles a year on and you haven't washed it in six months and you've got bugs all over the front, that's gonna need bug out or, or bug and grime from GM. That's when you use products like that. If you have a ceramic coated car or a waxed car and you're washing it every month, even once a month, you don't need those products to remove stuff from your car. You need a pressure washer and an IK foamer and some soap and that's it just let it just let it sit let it get moist with the uh with the with the soap and then just use a you know a separate wash pad or a microfiber towel and really just scrub those bugs off and they should come off very very easily if for some reason it is not coming off what you would deem relatively easily this is when you would use a bug remover product and that's how you remove bugs uh, always take off a license plate if you're a detailer when you're cleaning cars because there's all that dirt behind it and i can try and get it in focus better for you and even if you're just a guy who owns or a girl who owns their car and wants to clean their car every once in a while and maybe you buy stuff from our store and you're trying to do your own washes at home, like take your plate off every once in a while, every three, four months, every six months, whatever. Take your back plate off and clean behind that plate. There's always going to be dirt there um, unless maybe you're doing that and then there won't be any dirt. When you're doing your own washes, a lot of people miss this, but especially the guys who are doing the washes that are like the, they're paying someone to do a $20 wash. You can see this wheel looks pretty clean from afar. There's carbon ceramic uh, brakes on this so they don't dust very much. But look at the caliper. I'm sorry, yeah, the, uh, the calipers, right? The calipers, I'm trying to get that in focus. You can see how dirty they are because people rarely go in here with brushes and actually clean <clears throat> the, uh, the caliper. So I'll show you some here. You can see it good here, I think. Uh, I'll show you some tools that I'll use to clean this real quick and if you watch this channel you've probably seen that stuff. And also notice how the barrel of the wheel is really dirty compared to the face of the wheel. You can literally see where it stopped where they did the face and then they didn't do the barrel. So I'll show you some tools to do that um, just because if you're if you're like me and you're like a lot of other people in the world you want your whole wheel to be clean not just like 20% of the front of the wheel. And then you'll see right here, this little white spot, this is a uh, wax residue. So he told me that the, he, he recently had the car clean because he went on a road trip. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, the guy did a little bit of wax on the car. And a lot of these more inexpensive guys, they like to do like traditional older wax, mainly because it's inexpensive and they get a lot of uses out of it. And there's nothing too bad with that, except for those older waxes really like to stain trim. So as you can see here, we've got white wax and black trim, and then it's just kind of, I mean, honestly, it's kind of everywhere. Um, and because it's wax and not compound or polish, it will basically, for the most part, blow away when I pressure wash the entire car. But it's like in a bunch of weird places, like under here that I can't really show you. I don't want to spend 20 minutes walking the whole car, but you get the point. All, all of this stuff, all these pieces of trim, there's, there's white wax residue, like literally around the entire thing. So this is Brake Buster. We've got, I think there's a GSF in here in the uh, IK foamer. And then this is the, uh, the wheel woolly kit. So you get this big brush. Hopefully you guys can see that well. You get a really big brush, which honestly is not gonna work super well on this wheel. You get a medium sized brush, which is gonna work really well. And then you get this really tiny guy, um, which is gonna be kind of instrumental for some stuff on the caliper. So uh, we're just gonna put this away for a second. So first of all, Brake Buster is safe on carbon ceramic uh, rotors. Uh, so anyone with, you know, high-end Porsche, McLaren, Ferrari, Lamborghini, whatever, if you have carbon ceramic rotors, Brake Buster is safe for that. Do not use Iron X. Um, the, the big deal here is you still don't want to soak the, uh, the caliper in anything ridiculous. So we're really just going to spray the wheel. As you can see, not a lot got on the caliper. By no means it'll be soak it. It's this very little dusting on there. I am gonna shoot the uh, caliper pretty good though.
and then I'm gonna try and get it in behind the uh, barrels here. So the tire has all kinds of greasy crap on it. Um, it's all over the side of the car. So this is also pretty typical of your sort of not expensive detail. We're gonna use our, our foam here. And this is kind of useless for this rim, but it will do a good job on the front face and spokes. You can still get a little bit of the caliper here, but not, not a whole lot. All right, so obviously this is not gonna go like in all the way, but this guy should be able to slip behind. All right, but you can see this one will, will happily slip behind the, uh, the rotors here. Now you have to be careful, on, there's a little bit of resistance slipping this by the rotor. These brushes are pretty soft, but you need to be careful if you're using a brush that is more of a plastic piece over here because you can totally chip a carbon ceramic rotor and that is not good and is very expensive. So be, be careful, you know, around brakes like these. Um, I mo honestly, more than half of the cars I work on now basically have carbon ceramic rotors. So it's just kind of my wheelhouse and I'm used to it. Now behind this is basically going to be impossible to get in. So to, to do the behind the caliper, we're literally going to have to move the car, which I'm just going to do off camera. But it's not possible to get to get in there with really any tool because it's like a millimeter of space. Um, but I will use this brush and work the caliper itself so we can kind of clean that up. So this is the small guy. And this one is very nice for doing lug nuts. If you want to get into the lug nut area. But this is also going to help me get into stuff on the caliper that I couldn't get with the bigger pieces. I'll often take this off on the, uh, the front here and rinse out the lug nuts. And then also another step that people are always forgetting is take your, you know, your, your uh, pressure washer and do inside the wheel well. Um, it goes a long way in keeping it looking nice long term. All right, so just to show you guys, um, the back wheel here basically can almost use the full-size brush, and I just want to show you that. So you're going to see this fits full-size brush. Hopefully you can see that, yeah. Uh, that fits all the way underneath very, very easily. So, you know, these big brushes are great. It lets you move a little faster. So on this one, we still can't get behind the uh, parking brake, which is this guy. Um, and I really can't get behind here but I can get in the middle a little bit. So again, we're gonna need the uh, small guys. So our little guy here, which will, this is the middle, middle size. We're gonna use that to go behind the brake, parking brake. And behind the actual caliper. And most people don't do it because they just don't have the right tools. And that's kind of why I didn't do it when I was like really, really new and starting out. Because honestly, I hated cleaning wheels. Um, and now I love cleaning wheels because I've got great tools. And the wheel woolies, I think, are 50 bucks, which honestly is pretty reasonable considering like these will last you a very long time. Um, they get pretty dirty, so make sure you're always cleaning them out, rinsing them. Um, but they're the perfect tool to clean your wheels. Basically all the bugs uh, that I can see, like literally all the bugs came off with just that pressure washing. So just to show you guys, like the car turned out really, really nice from that. Um, on that shot on the tripod, which I think you can see right here, that little white speck in the center of the screen there is a rock chip. So 
whether a bug caused that or a rock, whatever it was. Um, obviously, that's not coming off just with a pressure washer. Um, but all the uh, all the bug stuff came off. All right. So one of the questions I get a lot is, uh, and this customer just asked me this question. He said, uh, "How do I know if it's ceramic coated?" And the easiest way to tell that question is how the water beads. Now, this isn't always the best way because depending on what's going on, uh, a, a brand new ceramic coating can get clogged up with all kinds of junk and not bead right. Um, but for the most part, one of the best ways to check if a car has a ceramic coating on it is to see how water beads on it. If it has perfect spherical beads, you know it has ceramic. Um, and also how it kind of sheets water. So I haven't sprayed any soap on the car yet. Uh, soap can kind of clog up uh, a ceramic coating temporarily because surfactants and soap can be really thick and be hard to rinse away. Uh, but if there's been nothing put on the car yet and I spray it with water and what you see right now is what happens, then you know that basically you have basically nothing on it. Just maybe like kind of not so good paste wax, which is why we had all that staining on there. So uh, let me show you what it looks like when I spray it with water. And now I'm gonna cue in some footage from other cars, especially the G80 M3 I just did, because that car had Gion Cure on it, which is a ceramic-based sealant, which is very inexpensive and very easy to put on your car. It's basically super hardcore wax. And even that is drastically different looking than this. So this has this very inexpensive paste wax on it, or honestly, like nothing, because it's, uh, it's pretty bad. It's not really behaving the way we want it to. especially on the bumper. I mean, it's just sheeting water so slowly. Um, and then it's really just kind of holding on to it on the hood there. And then if we zoom in here and look at the, uh, you know, the water beading, right? So this is what we talk about on this YouTube channel. We call that pancake beads. And we say pancake beads are just not good. They're not real ceramic. You can see some, some good old fashioned pancake beads right there. They're really long and not spherical. Um, and again, hopefully I can put some footage in over this for you guys and show you like a real ceramic bead is like super spherical. It's like, it's like super perfect. And again, if we look at all this, um, this is traditional, super old school wax. That's what that, that's what that looks like. And that's not necessarily bad, um, but you sure don't come to me for, for that. You, you come here for hardcore ceramic and ceramic water beading. Alrighty, I'm probably just gonna montage through uh, a little bit of stuff so we can get some work done because I've got a lot to do on this car. So uh, just enjoy the uh, cinematic montage.
Alrighty, so something unexpected happened when I was working on this car. It's kind of a freak thing. McLarens have their, uh, their weirdnesses for sure. So let me show you something uh, that happened while I was detailing the car. All right, so on the back of this car, we have a hatch. Uh, the 570 GT has a hatch. The 570S does not. When you pop this open, it's kind of strange. It opens to the left, not what you would kind of expect. Um, so it opens up like that, but you can get probably a set of golf clubs back here maybe. Um, and, and more importantly, it's just like, you know, you can get a little extra s s luggage or something in there because you still get a frunk, you get tie downs if you want to <laughs> strap something down, I guess, inside this thing. Um, so the point is there's a hatch back here. The 570S does not have this. So what you would normally do is you would just push this guy down and it would stay closed. And as of right now, it looks closed, right? Like you can look at that seam that for the most part looks closed. But if I do this, like for example, like I open the door and then I close the door, it pops that back open. So we're having an issue where the, the you know, I, I troubleshooted this for about an hour or two and you can see this is still here. I can close this, I do it like that. But if I put my finger in here, I can pop it back open. So basically this latch broke on this car. It's apparently relatively common. I'll tell you a story from when I was a kid and uh, it's all gonna make sense in a little bit. So when I was a kid, my uh, parents were nice enough to take me and my family to the Four Seasons in Florida, I'm pretty sure. I think it was Fort Lauderdale. And uh, it was a very nice vacation. And one of the things that stood out uh, to me when I stood there, when I stayed there, was the customer service was off the charts. Like I, I, I was, I don't know, maybe 12 years old or something. Um, but to this day, I just, I remember, I was like, holy cow, like these people were so nice to us. They took care of everything. Um, and it was very impressive. And, and, and one of the things that stood out on that trip was we were driving uh, somewhere on this big bridge and we got pulled over by, uh, by a police officer who said we were speeding. And I remember my dad being, you know, pretty frustrated with it and pretty upset about it. I'm sure we were speeding, but it, it was like a huge straight bridge where it, like the speed limit's 40 miles an hour and you're, we were doing 70 and the rest of the world was too and whatever. That wasn't, that's not the point. The point is it was frustrating. So when we get back to the hotel, my dad is really frustrated and he's rightfully so frustrated. And I, I've, we've stayed at the hotel for a couple days by then and I've realized that these people are here to kind of take care of us if we have a problem or need something. So I told him, Dad, why don't you go to the concierge desk and just tell them about the ticket and see if they'll take care of it. And uh, my dad walked over to the concierge desk, told him what happened, and he gave them the ticket. And uh, the guy said, hey, you know, no problem, I'll take care of it. And that was it, and we walked away. And when we ended up checking out, uh, they just added on the cost of the ticket to our bill and then everything was taken care of. And fixing that bill, that, that ticket was as simple as literally saying, hey, here's this, can you take care of this for me? But what, what a great solution to a problem, right? When you have a problem that's unexpected, you're on vacation, we were leaving the next day, we don't have time to figure out where to bring this thing and fill it out. And so we just gave it to them, they fixed it, they put it on the bill and that was it. And it was so simple. And that stuck with me, um, especially now as, I'm, as a business owner, that stuck with me that like, stuff like that sticks with you a long time when you really have some amazing customer service from a company. So when this hatch broke, um, obviously it's not my fault. I have nothing to do with the hatch breaking. It was an internal mechanical mechanism. All I did was use the button inside the car to open it and then it didn't want to close again after that. So even though that has nothing to do with me, even though that is 100% on the customer to fix that and repair that, the customer is currently on vacation or a business trip. It's, he's out of the state. So the point is, that's a frustrating thing to happen. So now he's going to come back, pick up his brilliantly clean, you know, fantastically clean car and the back of his hatch is broken and he technically can't drive it unless we duct tape it shut um, or it gets towed somewhere. So without him asking me, I just wanted to do this because it's what I would expect someone to do for me. It's, you know, the status detail is, is a business that I built because... I, I, everything that my company does is what I would want someone to do for me if I brought my McLaren somewhere or my Lamborghini somewhere. It's it's the service that I would have wanted if I was bringing my car to somewhere. And I don't think it exists and that's why I've created it. So long story short, I called multiple different locations that I know and trust to work on McLarens. I got quotes 
I got, I, I diagnosed the entire thing. I probably spent three hours diagnosing it, trying a million things. I contacted a friend of mine who used to work at McLaren Chicago to help me uh, diagnose it. I took all that information to multiple different locations and got quotes. I saw if they could pick the car up for us. And then I delivered all of that information to the customer. So when he returns, all he has to do is call, he's already done this. Now he's called the place it's going to go and they're going to fix it. They're either going to pick the car up from us here or he's gonna drive it and we're gonna duct tape that thing shut. It's totally the customer's decision. But the point is I saved that customer probably an hour to two hours of diagnosing it himself. And then he doing all the legwork to call all those things. All he's gonna do now is come back from his trip, pick his car up and drive it somewhere or he's going to go basically directly to the shot. He's gonna come here no matter what to see the detail. But the, after that, he's gonna basically let it get towed somewhere or drive it somewhere and I've removed several hours of aggravation for him to have to do all that stuff and guys that's what status detail is like like this is a high-end experience I price things a certain way sometimes my prices are more expensive than other people's prices but a lot goes into what happens to your car here it, it's a customer service centric visit and that happens from when you before you get here to when you get here to when you leave um, and when things like this happen it sucks and I, I really uh, you know, quote unquote, take advantage of that situation to really blow you out of the water and show you what I'm about and what this business is about. Um, because it's, it's, you know, I don't think a lot of other businesses are going to do that for you. This, this is on the customer to fix. And I kind of took it upon myself to make it so it was the easiest possible thing for him to go through all this and, and, and take care of it. And, uh, so, you know, that, that story from, uh, the fourth season stuck with me because, Without that experience, I don't know if I would necessarily think that this was something I should do. But as a, but as a kid, that stuck with me, and it was a big deal. So I hope little things like this stick with my customers, so they always know. Or when they're telling their friend about Status Detail, they're like, "Oh no, Evan! Evan takes care of you no matter what." Like that's what Status Detail does, besides high-end detailing. Um, I, I want that to be like you know the legend of what this brand is. Is that it's the most high-end exclusive you know, detailing experience that you can basically have um, within this state, but maybe eventually we can even say within, you know, the USA. So that's the story. Uh, frustrating thing to break on a very expensive car, but I hope we uh, we made it easier for the customer. And uh, I thought because this was a vlog, it was a good way to kind of interject and just throw this story into the end of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I think you'll enjoy our videos if you watched all the way to this point of this video. Uh, so many crazy videos we've already filmed, the Bugatti stuff, the P1 stuff, so many more cool stories to come, and so many more cool cars to detail that are already scheduled and coming. And uh, yeah, guys, if you liked the video, liked it, subscribe, and let me know if you have questions, anything below, car care related, whatever, let me know. I'm always happy to comment with you guys uh, down below. And uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next video, and we'll roll some cool outro footage. See you guys.